So now we're moving on to our final uh, animal phyla, and that's phylum chordata. Uh, we'll spend a little more time on this group than any of the others, uh, partly because it's um, it's broken into these three subphyla. Now the phylum arthropoda was broken into even more subphyla, and are far more diverse and have uh, far more members uh, in terms of um, numbers of individuals and species and everything else. But this happens to be the group that that humans are. are belong to, so they tend to get a little bit um, preferential treatment and spend a little more time here. Um, so we are going to have a little more time in this group than others. To start off with, all members of this phyla have a certain number of key traits. So you, there typically has been four, but it's kind of been upgraded to, to these five now key, chordate, traits, and these are traits that all chordates uh, have at some point in time in their life. So they don't always have them all their life, but at some point in time, either during development, they have these structures and then they lose them, or they do have them and they keep them their entire life. Uh, and that's kind of how we'll separate some of these groups. So the Eurochordata will have um, some of these structures and then they actually lose them. Cephalochordata actually will keep the majority of them all exactly as we described them here. Um, their whole lives, and, and then the vertebrata are going to uh, modify them quite a bit. So that's what we're going to do into right now, and then we'll go uh, separate lectures on each of those groups, and we'll actually spend an even more time on the vertebrates, breaking some of them down into uh, some of the classes. So here are the traits. The first one is going to be what we call a hollow dorsal notochord. Uh, no, hollow dorsal nerve cord. And the not the notochord is beneath that. And so this is important because people confuse these really all the time. So this is the nerve cord. It is hollow. Okay. It is also dorsal, meaning it's a, it's on the back. The other animals that we've talked about um, mostly up until this point have had a ventral nerve cord, or sometimes multiples. Uh, and it's a solid nerve cord. This is going to be a hollow tube. Okay. Now, I mentioned another term, which is this blue structure here. Um, so I'm going to outline this with a pink because this is uh, my marker's not working. The pink a little bit because that structure there. This blue structure here is the one that I just also said called the notochord. Now that's a solid structure. And I'm going to talk about them both uh, here for just a second. So there's a process in these animals called neurulation. It's a developmental process like gastrulation, sort of where a group of cells that are given a chemical signal, then the cells start to um, behave in a certain way. They start to move or pull in one direction or another and form some type of new embryonic structure. So in neurulation, what we have is first, the notochord forms first. And that's from mesoderm. So mesodermal tissue will produce this solid sort of rod-like structure, mostly made up of uh, glycoproteins and collagen. And it runs typically the length of the animal's body. It provides um, support and structure for the animal. It's a place that muscles can attach to and are flexed sort of against um, and can then be replaced potentially in some of the groups later on. But at least at some point in time in development, they'll have this notochord. And it's important because there's a certain time when the notochord itself will release chemicals that will then signal They'll send signals to the ectodermal tissue above it. So right now, this is ectoderm. And then what will happen is some of those ectodermal cells will start to move inward, right? Just kind of like the gastrulation process, right? Except this isn't just happening in a point and pulling inward. This is actually happening along the entire, well, not the entire animal from, from tip to tip, but, but generally along the length of the animal's body, okay? All the way along. 
And so then these, 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 these neural folds, it doesn't happen simultaneously. Kind of in one area, it kind of happens first and then kind of folds over and then closes and then forms this tube. And then that kind of moves down. So usually it starts more anterior and then moves posterior. And so you end up forming this tube. At first, it's just like a straw where it's open actually at both ends. And then typically what will happen is that the ends will close and seal off. So you actually have then solid ends to it. So then you have a hollow tube. That hollow tube is the hollow, it's on the dorsal side, and it's going to become the nerve cord for the animal. And it'll have the fluid inside it. Our, for us, it's our spinal fluid um, that's inside our, our spinal cord. That's the structure. That's what the structure is becoming. In addition to that, what will often occur is a temporary closure, so called an occlusion in the anterior region. So this is our anterior end. This is our posterior end. And then this anterior region will swell with fluid, kind of ballooning outward. And then generally that occlusion will be removed and it will continue to open. And that structure will essentially provide a, a place for cell division to occur to create the brain. So this will become the brain ultimately here and then and the spinal cord. Right? And so, but it all starts off as just one hollow tube called the hollow dorsal nerve cord. And all chordates are going to have this whether it's a urochordate, which is an animal like a tunicate, called, also called a sea squirt, which are just little filter feeding animals. Right? You wouldn't think at all that they were closely related to us or, or part of the same phyla, but they are because they have this structure as part of their uh, larvae before they metamorphose into that. They'll also have this notochord, which they have to have the notochord, you see, to have the hollow dorsal nerve cord because the notochord regulates and controls the formation of the nerve cord. So the two things are very closely tied, tied together. But the one is structural, the notochord, and the nerve cord will become then the main part of the central nervous system of the animal. So these are the first two characteristics. So one, the, the markers are failing. One, the hollow dorsal nerve cord. Two, the notochord. So there's five key characteristics. The next is going to be these pharyngeal gear, gill slits. So, the animal's digestive system of a mouth and an anus. Okay, so complete digestive system. And the pharynx, which is most of the animals have had just following the mouth to the interior, here we're going to have these slits or openings that in fish will give rise to gills, right? this whole structure. And so the animal can pull in water, the water can then pass over the gills, then they can get oxygen from this. So it can become associated with the circulatory system and, and have diffusion of oxygen and gases, other gases there. It can be used for filter feeding. So some of the animals can, we've seen that in bivalves, right? Where they use part of their um, tinnidia, their gill-like structures to both feed and for, for respiration. Same kind of idea here. We have these structures early on in embryonic development, and then they are rearranged into structures of our inner ear, so later on. But at one point in very early development, we also have these pharyngeal gill slits, and so all chordates have to have them then at some point in time. The uh, digestive system, mouth to anus, runs like this, and then, different than several of the other animals that we've had, there's a tail. But see, the anus doesn't end at the tip of the tail. We, did, we saw this in a number of other organisms that had kind of a, um, a digestive tract that runs along the length of the animal's body, that the mouth is kind of right at the very front and the anus is right at the very end. Here we have what's called a post-anal tail. So that's our number four, which essentially means there's a region of the animal's body, a tail often used for locomotion, uh, to swim, these are mostly aqu aquatic organisms. Uh, and it's, it goes beyond where the, uh, anus, uh, 
emerges from the animal. So the postanal tail is another characteristic, again, sometimes kept in some of the organisms and then other times lost, depending on what happens as they develop. These are really the four key traditional characteristics. Um, and then um, we've kind of added in this other one, um, a fifth one, which is a gland. Okay, So this gland is called the endostyle. In, in us in humans, uh, it would be analogous to our, our thyroid gland. It might become the thyroid gland. So it's a gland in these organisms that secretes hormones that can regulate um, growth. Uh, and they'll have that, at, all of them have it at some, at some point in time. So that's become now a fifth key chordate characteristic. Not as easy to see typically as the others, um, but, uh, but it's, it's one of the common ones that is carried throughout. So make sure you know this basic structure. We're going to see it in each of these groups at some point in time. It's either going to be the, the whole anatomy of the entire group. So say for the cephalochordata, this is pretty much going to be it. We'll add a couple little uh, extra details to it, but a cephalochordate looks like this as an adult. This is just what the animal looks like. Um, Neurochordata will look like this as a larval form, and then it will metamorphose and lose a number of these structures and rearrange them. So it won't look anything like this as an adult, but it does as a larvae. And for the vertebrates, all go through stages of this at some point in time. So we go through these stages, we go through this neurulation process, uh, we have all these things at some point, and then it changes, and that's the same for fish and birds and reptiles and, and, and everything else. Okay. So these are the, the, the key characteristics that all the chordates of this particular phyla will share at some point in time.